The most common reaction that creationists have when their cherished views are challenged is the mocking question. Oh yeah? Well, how did the Big Bang create itself then? Hmm? <laughs> oh yeah? Well, no one has ever observed one kind of animal evolving into another. Oh yeah? Well, if we evolved from monkeys, then why are there still monkeys? They can't just discuss and debate the issues, both because they are not willing to consider any facts presented to them and because they believe that they have all the answers anyways. Take, for instance, this interaction between Aaron Ra and a creationist. Evolution right now! Give me evidence! What do you want me to do? Give me evidence for evolution okay. right now! You have a Think how silly you are! Do you understand that? That's not evidence for evolution! How is You're it making not? a statement! You're not giving any evidence for evolution! I'm giving you evidence for evolution! You are a primate! How do you explain That's not evolu evidence for evolution! It is certainly... They are so used to holding to a simple belief system that has simple, soundbite answers to everything that if someone can't just quickly summarize a complex issue into a one-liner that a child could understand, they mock and ridicule and take it as a confirmation that their opponent was left speechless. It is only a confirmation of their simple mindset. What if that was their approach to every subject? For instance, prove general relativity and time dilation to me right now in simple terms. Ha! I didn't think so. If they were willing to take the time to look at the evidence, they may learn something. Okay, so how is being a primate evidence for evolution? Arnra had a very good point, but that point needs to be backed up with data, and no one just carries around the information and studies that prove it, and I doubt very much that those creationists would have sit long enough to look at it anyway, but I don't think they ever do. Most people, even creationists, wouldn't have a problem with the fact that bonobos and chimpanzees have a common ancestor. They wouldn't even need to see corroborating evidence, again. I doubt they would care. Their external similarities alone are usually sufficient. And all of the evidence does indeed show that they have a common ancestor. We sequence their genomes and can see exactly how closely related they are. Again, it's the, well, it's still a dog creationist anthem. Bonobos and chimps are more closely related to each other than one of them is to a mouse or an elephant. No surprises there. But what about us? We were specially created on the sixth day of creation by the war god of the ancient Hebrews out of the dust of the ground, right? We are definitely not related to primates. Our similarities are just coincidence. It's a common designer, not common ancestry issue here, right? I mean, we're talking about the almighty god of the universe. He, we wouldn't expect him to just copy-paste chimp DNA when he's specially creating someone in his own image, right? Well, as it happens... We've sequenced the DNA of all three, humans, chimps, and bonobos, and the results were published in the issue of Nature for the week of June 28, 2012, and here they are. It's like sitting in the chair of a talk show and being shown through DNA testing that you are, in fact, the father. You may deny it and shout and cry, but there it is, on paper, for the whole world to see humans, chimps, and bonobos had a common ancestor. We apparently weren't created separately like the Bible claims, but somehow we're all grown from the same genetic template. Ah, but we still have to deal with that pesky, common designer, not common ancestry problem that keeps buzzing around the creationist dogma like flies around a dead horse. How Darwin's theory pictures the history of life as a tree, with species gradually evolving into others over millions of years, producing new branches and twigs a process that gives rise to all the variety of life from bacteria to Darwin's finches to ourselves but intelligent design takes a different view as the movement's own literature shows intelligent design teaches a history of life in which organisms appear abruptly are unrelated and linked only by their designer While drawing separate species on a graph with straight, non-intersecting lines as if they were specially created does accurately represent the way young Earth creationists would like it to be, it does not accurately reflect the data that we have. Many animals have the ability to synthesize vitamin C without directly ingesting it. This is because they possess a gene that enables this function. We, on the other hand, cannot synthesize our own vitamin C and must ingest it directly from fruits and vegetables or we will die. This hasn't been too much of a problem for humans, because our diet includes a good deal of plant matter that is rich in vitamin C. When we found out exactly which gene in these animals are responsible for the function of vitamin C synthesis, we looked at the exact same location in our genome, take note, the exact same location in the genome, that directly corresponds to 
vitamin C synthesis gene in other animals. And what do you think we found? The vitamin C synthesis gene. Only it had been deactivated through accumulated mutations. These leftover genes are known as pseudogenes, or fossil genes. Great apes, such as chimps, gorillas, and macaques, have extra strong muscles attached to their jaws that provide them the extra bite force necessary for their survival. These muscles are expressed by a gene called MYH16. Humans do not have these extra strong muscles attached to our jaws, but you guessed it, we have the gene for them. The exact gene that our great ape relatives have, and ours is switched off by a point mutation. It sits there, unused, in your genome right now. A relic from your ancestors. Creationists would have to claim that not only did the creator borrow from the primate genome to create man, remember primates were created first, but also would have to believe that this creator placed descendant markers in the genome as if humans and primates shared a common ancestor. The more facts that are learned make the case for evolution progressively clearer and easier, but make the creationist case harder and more convoluted all the time. Fossil genes are, in my opinion, the most amazing evidence of evolution we have today. Take, for instance, the genes controlling our sense of smell. It has been discovered that fully 3% of our genome is devoted to genes for detecting different odors. We have around 1,000 genes devoted to our sense of smell. Many mammals rely on their sense of smell to survive. Dogs are well known for the, their ability to track scents. However, when we sequenced the human genome, we found something amazing. Even though we humans have all 1,000 plus genes for scent, a full 300 of them are not utilized. Further than that, those 300 genes have been rendered inactive by mutations. This is due to natural selective pressures relaxing when a function is no longer needed for survival. The mutations that would be selected against in a necessary function just accumulate until the gene function becomes impossible. Now in nature, there are two kinds of olfactory genes ones that enable detecting odors in the water, and ones that enable detection of odors in the air. As expected, fish have water-based receptors, and mammals have air-based ones. However, we see something quite amazing in dolphins and whales. Instead of having water-based odor genes, as we would expect with animals that live in the water, they have air-specialized genes. But the catch is they don't use their nasal passages for smelling. They've adapted it as a blowhole. The result is that while they have all of the mammalian air-smelling genes, every single one has become non-functional. The record of their land-based mammalian ancestry is written in their genes. If dolphins and whales did not evolve from land-dwelling animals but were specially created as sea creatures, why did this creator include a full complement of non-functioning mammalian air-based olfactory genes? To retain a young earth creationist belief in the face of this evidence, you would have to deny it outright, which would be tantamount to retaining a belief that the earth is flat in the face of pictures from space to the contrary. Or you would have to believe that the intelligent designer wanted to make it look like everything evolved, that he planted a record of evolution in nature to fool us. And that's why the more we study, the more evidence we find in support of the theory of evolution. In that case, I would pose a simple question. If God wrote the story of evolution into the very fabric of our being, how then could you blame anyone for believing it?